problem seems to be that instead of engineering colleges focusing on uh, making engineers competent, you know, all the students are chasing marks and other things. And that's partly the reason why uh, the colleges are not able to focus on creating competent engineers. And it is not that difficult to create a competent engineer. All the engineer has to do is to pick up you know, one or two niche areas in uh, what they're doing and become competent in that. And that's definitely achievable over a four year period. In, in fact, we think that it's achievable even in a two year period. And uh, so if colleges start refocusing on competency instead of uh, examinations and marks and internals and so on, uh, then I think uh, they'll achieve, they'll you know, get where they need to get. The other point is that to become competent, you have to have a fair amount of hands-on experience. That is something that's missing today in uh, engineering colleges. So many students come out without much of experience of using their hands or doing things. And uh, that again contributes to the lack of competency and therefore uh, that figure even the 20% may be high if you look at uh, holistically at what an engineer can do today. The success of the IT industry is responsible in a way for the crisis in engineering education today. Uh, over the last 10-15 years, IT industry, the services industry has hired engineering students irrespective of the branches or their core skills in engineering, trained them to do what they wanted to do, paid them good salaries. So this sent a message across the system that engineering students need not become competent in engineering. And today when the market has changed where everyone is looking for competence in engineering, these students are left high and dry in the same way of trying to simply score marks in exams and come out and look for jobs. So, that's primarily the reason why we have a crisis today. Yeah, to add to the problem of uh, you know, engineering competence, I think one of the other problems is that the uh, IT industry took away a lot of good teachers and the consequence of that is that you know, bad teachers have been left behind. This is a bit like killing the golden goose. Uh, and consequently, how do you get good uh, students if you don't have good teachers? So that's another issue, uh, that we do not have uh, very competent teachers and therefore all of these are cyclic in some sense. We have bad teachers, probably bad pays, and uh, there's no reason for knowing core engineering competence and all of these contribute to creating an environment where uh, students are uh, not that competent, it's not a fault of the student but it's a part of the environment. We are uh, gearing to scale up the Jedi Gifted Engineers program to reach to a large number of students. Essentially, we have packaged what an engineering student should know in the first two years into about 50 sessions of face-to-face, team-based problem solving in combination with learning of concepts on our online platform. So concepts online, face-to-face -face sessions to solve problems, over 50 sessions in two years. At the end of these two years, we believe the Jedi students will have learned how to think like an engineer and more importantly, they will have experienced the joy of being an engineer. And I think together, that is all we need to do to scale up the impact of the Jedi program.